as a young citizen of India, armed with technology, knowledge and love for my nation, with a vision of transforming India into a developed nation, I am joining Shobhith University. What about you? Very good morning to all the participants from India and abroad. Sobeth Institute of Engineering and Technology, Meerut, deemed to be university, Center for Agricultural Informatics and E-Governance Research Studies, and Center for Agribusiness and Disaster Management Studies, extend greetings to all the participants from India and abroad who are attending today's national webinar series on doubling farmers income by 2022, Atma Nirvar Bharat in agriculture. This webinar series is being hosted on every Thursday at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Indian Standard Time. Today is 11th March, 2021. The, this webinar is on the topic, poultry monitoring, smart poultry monitoring solutions. On behalf of the Honorable Chancellor, the Honorable Vice Chancellor, the faculty members of the university, and on my behalf, and as Professor Emeritus and Chairman of the Centers of Excellence, Center for Agricultural Informatics and E-Governance Research Studies, and Center for Agribusiness and Disaster Management Studies, welcome our today's guest speaker, Madam Archana Sindam, COO, Poultry Mon, a startup from Hyderabad, Telangana State. So far, under this webinar series, the university has organized 23 webinars on the topic. Role of agricultural cooperative societies and e-governance. Blockchain technology-based fishery value chain. A self-contained village, a felt need of the day. Spices Informatics Network Value Chain. Lantana Camera, a camouflaged treasure trout. Smart Hill Agriculture. Integrated Mariculture, Aquaponics and Precision Agriculture. In short, MAPA Biofarms for Income Revolution. Mera Mobile, Mera Marketing. Smart tribal agriculture optimizing value chain. Smart agri tech and industry perspective. Land resources technologies for increasing farming. Land resources information system in India, present and road ahead. Weather decision technologies for increasing farm income. Big data in smart farming. Sustainable soil and land management for climate smart agriculture understanding market dynamics for increasing farm income role of technologies in mitigating crop risk how to generate additional profit for via attractive approaches in farm produce adoption of flexi rubber jet tan technology potential benefit for farmers in rain fed and coastal agro, agro ecosystems. Adoption of flexi rubber check dam technology. Potential benefit for farmers in rain fed and coastal agro ecosystems. Realizing the economic benefits for agroforestry and octosol, organic humic solutions for increasing crop yields and quality while increasing farm income and improving soil health. Closing the nutrient loop, phosphorus management in protein farming, artificial intelligence enabled pest management technology for agricultural crop protection, empowering farmers through extension on knowledge dissemination, role of mass media. Today is the 24th edition of this national webinar series, which will be addressed by Madam Archana Chindam. Keywords, poultry monitoring, poultry mon, a startup, smart poultry monitoring solutions based on IoT, industrial IoT and artificial intelligence solutions. Our agriculture sector is the foundation of Indian economy. 
It employs more than 50% of the Indian workforce and contributes almost 17 to 18% of its GDP. At present, agricultural livelihoods are being severely impacted world over as a result of global warming and climate change. India's labor intensive and subsistence based agriculture sector is particularly vulnerable to this development. Climate change has both the direct and indirect effects on agricultural productivity, livestock productivity, poultry productivity, including changing rainfall patterns, severe drought, flooding, and changes in the geographical redistribution of pests and diseases. Indian farming community comprises of about 14 crore farmers, of which 85% farmers having small and marginal farmers, having less than two hectares of land. Most of the poultry farmers in the backyard poultry farms are small and marginal farmers, are landless farmers. Many national level programs, namely Digital India, Make in India, Skill India, Startup India, Stand Up India, have faced operational difficulties for its impact at farm level or farmer level, and that too at small and marginal farmers. Reforms towards digitalization of agricultural systems. Doubling farmers' income by 2022 report submitted to the government during 2018 talked about digitalization in a very big manner. I was associated as a chairman of two subcommittees, subgroups of this doubling farmers' income by 2022 you know, task force for drafting reports, volume 12B and volume 11. Government of India, through its National Informatics Center, has prepared IT blueprint for agriculture through a national conference on Informatics for Sustainable Agriculture Development is done May 1995. I was the organizing secretary of this international you know, national conference. And in 2005, the Government of India launched a national e-governance program in agriculture. The Volume 3, Volume 4, Volume 11, and Volume 12B of the Doubling Farmers' Income by 2022, a report 2018 of Government of India, have suggested reform measures for income rise through digitalization of farm of agriculture. Just one minute. Volume three is on post-production agriculture logistic. This is maxima, maximizing gain for farmers. Volume 4, Post-Production Interventions, Agricultural Marketing. Volume 11, Empowering the Farmers Through Extension and Knowledge Dissemination. And Volume 12B, Digital Technology in Agriculture. I am quoting these four volumes of the Doubling the Farmers' Income by 2022, which are relevant for today's talk. This is with the intent to achieve efficiency gain and convert into prob probability uh, the profitability from farm to fork agricultural logistic is the backbone of agribusiness and agricultural marketing is the brain behind realization value realization farmers produce must connect with multiple avenues to obtain value at each place across time and space and in various forms. Volume 12B has suggested strategic use of digital technology in farming systems life cycle through seven mission mode programs in its chapter 10. One is digitalized agriculture, it means digital technology and innovation in agriculture. It means synergization of digital India, make in India, skill India and stand up India programs 
for transformational form uh, you know reforms in agricultural sector through three verticals smart irrigated form uh, uh, farming where assured irrigation is available smart rain fed farming which has to depend upon weather god and smart tribal farming smart tribal farming facilitates sustainable agricultural development digitalized agromet advisories and agricultural risk management solutions third is digitalized agricultural resources information system and micro level planning for achieving smart village and smart farming fourth is digitalized value chain for about 400 agriculture commodities digitalized access to inputs technology knowledge skill agricultural finance credit marketing and agribusiness management to farmers digitalized integrated land and water management systems for a drop more crop and the last one is very important is that how to achieve digitalized farm health management for reduction of farmers loss today farmer has to look for from pillar to post for plant health animal health soil health water health and fish health including his human health it is also known that 85% of the disease which a human get from animal so it is essential even covid 19 also is the and a virus from the animal so if the animal disease are quarantined the budget for human health is utilized properly so this i have been wise to from 2010 when i was asked to deliver a talk in 2011 in national agriculture science congress that um, today it is also part of the you know the doubling farmers income by 2022 and now the whole world is talking about national one health and eco health whereas in india we are talking about you know human health animal health plant health that is agriculture and food nutrition and water health and soil health and fish health so it means that the complete food cycle is has to be you know pesticide free and the health condition should be known for human health to be appropriate so this can generate large scale employment opportunities at the rural area students with the biology background if they are trained on informatics component so they can serve the 14 crore farmers at the grassroots level with respect to you know integrated farm health management at farm level at uh, you know cattle farm livestock farm level poultry farm level fishery pond, uh, fishery farm level and so on and so forth then there are three acts which were enacted in uh, in uh, in um, 2020 farmer produce trade and commerce promotions and facilitation act farmers empowerment and protection agreement on price assurance and farm services act and essential commodities amendment act with these three acts and the seven mission mode project on digital technology in agriculture can liberate 85% of the farming community that is small and marginal farmers from the clutches of large scale farmers to realize their you know market values for their you know produce this can generate at least one agri startup in every gram panchayat you know it means that 2.25 lakhs agri startup can come up with the digital technology in agriculture and with this three you know acts can facilitate 2.25 lakhs agri tech startups this is what is essential this is you know it's it has to this can bring in a large scale reforms for the farming community you know through the involvement of digital technology rural youths and computer science professionals agriculture science professionals you know put together and they can bring in value chain digitalized value chain for farmer producers india is the country which has 365 days sunshine we grow you know agriculture produce throughout the year and we can feed the whole world so 
these three these three firm acts and seven mission mode project of the digital technology and agriculture of the doubling farmers income has the economic viability sustainability and scalability through 2.25 lakh agricultural agri tech startups in the country to revolutionize agricultural sector in a big manner and it will become a, a career option in agriculture sector no more the farmer will say that my son will not do farm you know farmer farming sector can put more money in the pockets of the farmer atma nirbhar bharat the road ahead it's it is the vision of the prime minister of india shri narendra modi of making india a self reliant nation rested on five i's intent inclusion investment infrastructure and innovations based on five pillars Econo economic quantum jump infrastructure that one represents modern india system that is 21st century technology driven systems vibrant demography source of energy for self reliant india and demand whereby the strength of our demand and supply chains should be utilized to full capacity this was announced on 15th may 2020 vocal for local to make it global make in india make for india make for global atmanirbhar bharat in agriculture also had a big economic booster which has got about 1.5 lakh crore in the third trench of atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan now let us come to the poultry farming which is poultry farming industry sector indian livestock sector is predominantly rural and an integral adjunct to crop husbandry india has a vast network of scientific and research institutions designed to support a modernizing livestock sector poultry industry in india has endured an exemplary transformation in structure and operations during the last two decades and modified into a mega industry with the presence of a huge number of workers from a mere backward poultry farming that appears to be very fast poultry industry is contributing about 90000 crores to the national gdp and providing employment to more than 5 million people either directly or indirectly the share of poultry sector in gross domestic product is approximately 1% and 11.7% in the livestock gdp indian poultry industry has grown largely due to the initiative of private companies minimal government intervention and very considerable indigenous poultry genetics capabilities and support from the complementary veterinary health poultry feed poultry equipment and poultry processing sectors poultry is one of the most important and fastest growing sectors of agriculture sectors today in india poultry sector majorly maintains the requirements of protein and nutrition india today is one of the largest manufacturers of egg and broiler meat india is the world's largest egg producer and fifth largest producer of broilers india's poultry market comprising of broilers and eggs was worth of indian rupee 1750 billion in 2018 and was worth indian rupees 2049 billion in 2019 the market is further projected to reach indian rupees 4340 billion by 2024 growing at a compound annual growth rate of 16.2% during 2019 to 2024 indian poultry industry is booming and emerging as the world's second largest market the growth rate is growing 
at the phenomenal rate of 12 to 15 percent every year. Sorry, I'm in a meeting. I'll call you later. The commercialization of Indian poultry industry over the past decades has evolved, it has involved sizable investments in poultry breeding, poultry breeding, hatching, rearing, and processing. Concurrently, India's unrecognized and back, back, backyard poultry sector is also one of the potent tools for subsidiary income generation for many landless and marginal farmers and also provides nutritional security to the rural poor. Rural poultry farming is of great importance in a country like India as it is it not only generates income levels, employment opportunities to small farmers, including women, but also brings about desired socio-economic changes in rural areas which are vital for rural development and rural prosperity. Poultry informatics network value chain. <clears throat> in 2008, I presented a paper, mainstreaming ICT for faster and more inclusive growth and the development in livestock sector. It was presented as a theme paper at the National Conference on Distance, Distance Education to animal farmers held at Banaras Hindu University, Varanasi, Uttar Pradesh, organized by the Indian Association of Animal Production, Noida, Uttar Pradesh, on 1st February 2008. <coughs> In this paper, I proposed the following informatics network in the livestock sector to improve productivity and production based on my lecture, Animal Production and Health Informatics Network, APH Net, delivered in the conference organized by the Veterinary Council of India 2000. Animal Production Health and Informatics, a Health Informatics Network, which was visualized by me, presented in 2000 into the Veterinary Council of India. Today is 2021. Veterinary Education Network, Dairy Informatics, Dairy Education Network, Dairy Production System Network, Cattle Development Informatics Network, Grassland and Fodder Research Informatics Network, and Poultry Informatics Network, Pickery Informatics Network, Sheep and Goat Informatics Network, Animal Husbandry and Veterinary Services Information System, Animal Disease Surveillance and Advisory Systems, Animal Quarantine Informatics Network, and Agriculture Marketing Information System Network to be you know, introduced for livestock. You know, market poultry informatics network thus was conceptualized in 2000 and was also repeated in 2008 launching the national animal disease reporting system i was instrumental in collaboration with when i was the deputy director general in national informatics central head of the agricultural informatics working with the minister of agriculture department of animal husbandry, dairying, and fisheries. We have operationalized National Animal Disease Reporting System, connecting 7,032 locations in the country in 2012 to monitor and report about 144 animal diseases, you know, notified by OIE. Veteran infrastructure, legislative backup support, and human resources in India are enormous. It has got about 11,962 polyclinics, hospitals, 25,921 veterinary dispensaries, 24,738 veterinary aid centers, 250 disease diagnostic laboratories, and five regional disease diagnostic laboratories. Disease diagnostic facilities in every state agriculture university and veterinary colleges, Indian Veterinary Research Institute at Isad Nagar, world class laboratories at uh, National Dairy Development Board at Anand, National Institute of High Security Animal Disease, Bhopal, and National Institute of Veterinary Epidemiology and Disease Informatics. The informatics word was you know, added to this ICR institution after I initiated 
Animal Protection and Health Informatics Network. National Institute of Animal Health, Bhagpat, Uttar Pradesh. Artificial intelligence applications in poultry, it is also now increasing. The value of artificial intelligence extends beyond forms. With the range of applications in poultry processing, egg packing, and processing plants. Robotics and artificial intelligence solutions are also increasing in the poultry sector. Robotics are used in poultry industry for egg collection, feeding, and manage man, and managing shed ventilations and so on and so forth. Robots software can differentiate between eggs and non-objects with 95% accuracy as per the published reports. As millions of birds are maintained in various housing systems, so a reliable automatic method to improve surveillance of large numbers of birds is very relevant. Farmhouse innovations, remote access livestock monitoring. Livestock monitoring systems allows poultry farmers the ability to view the broiler sheds internally from their smartphones, tablets, and personal computers in greater detail. They can view feed and drinker lines, drinker lines, hoppers, bird spread, all without the need to enter the house as regularly as they normally would. Smart farming, applications of Industry 4.0 technology. It is an ongoing automation of traditional manufacturing and industrial practices using modern and smart technology. The key technologies are A, B, C, D, E. A is artificial intelligence, analytics, operation research. B is blockchain. C is cloud, IoT, 5G communications. D is big data. And E is ecosystem. Industry 4.0 is today. And tomorrow we will have industry 5.0. Artificial intelligence technology combined with big data hold the potential to solve many key clinical trial challenges. Big data and AI technologies are complementary as AI can help to synthesize and analyze ever expanding data. No data means no artificial intelligence solutions. Poor data means poor AI. Robotic process automation, RPA, through virtual software agents, cyber physical systems, <coughs> and physical robots provide enormous opportunities for products developments by emerging technology startups. Let us now turn to the address by Madam Archana Chindam, Chief Operating Officer, Poultry Mon, a startup, Hyderabad, on the topic Poultry Mon. Smart poultry monitoring solutions. Digitalization of agriculture in India. Application of IoT, robotics, informatics to establish farm extension 4.0 is the order of the day nowadays. As per the synopsis of our guest speaker, their product, their startup provides smart monitoring solutions for poultry hatcheries and farms using IoTs and the AI to increase productivity and quality of chicks. Poultry Mon uses proprietary technology to help hatcheries and farms to optimize yield and minimize energy consumption. With our real-time alerts and analytics, decisions can be made in real-time and are data-driven. We demonstrate added value of connectivity and complete visibility into the poultry process minimizes the possibility of human errors and fraud by enhancing transparency and traceability using proprietary technology interface to help hatcheries and farms to optimize yield and reduce mortality. They made a very big headline. We made hatching process easy. So this is where their solution is that today's topic that is we made hatching process easy will motivate and galvanize the participants watching over telecast through facebook.com oblique soviet university india or youtube.com oblique soviet university in 
for establishing agri tech startups more than 6500 agri tech startups at least one per block or even about 2.25 lakh agri startups one per each gram panchayat let me invite mr uh, madam archana chindam our guest speaker to address the participants before that let me introduce our guest speaker madam archana chindam is the chief operating officer of poultry mon a startup hyderabad telangana state but madam archana chindam has co-founded poultry mon in 2008 18 a small poultry monitoring company poultry mon provides real-time remote monitoring solutions to increase productivity and quality in poultry hatcheries and farms with over 11 plus years of experience in management and business development madam archana chindam has set up exports divisions and handling new overseas market development now however her specialties are business development and strategy and developing new customer segments and growth millet solutions which has established this startup is dedicated to provide cost effective solutions and highly qualified consultants in building entry and architecture for big data and iot applications solving diversified and complex business problems using data driven approach a smart manufacturing and industry 4.0 company we welcome madam archana chindam to the national webinar series on doubling farmers income by 2022 atma nirbhar bharat in agriculture to address our audience our participants from india and abroad on the topic poultry mon their their you know technology which is smart poultry monitoring solutions we welcome you and over to you for your address thank you Good morning, everyone. Uh, firstly, I uh, would like to thank uh, uh, Sir uh, Muni Sir uh, uh, personally for inviting me over to this uh, national webinar. I am really honored to present our technology and also pave any future growth uh, from um, budding entrepreneurs. I'm happy to answer, guide if um, they have any questions particular to entrepreneurship or uh, technology related to agri-tech or you know strategy of business and um and a big thanks to uh, shobit university uh, vc sir and uh, others and um uh, good morning to all the delegates students uh, joining from here abroad um it's a pleasure talking to you um so this is a virtual uh, meeting and i'm really glad that uh, i'm able to connect to so many people at once um uh explaining about technology how it's impacting the poultry sector from here on so which uh, was not possible uh, uh physically as of now but uh, really glad to be here today uh presenting and sharing our experience as a journey so i would like to make this an interactive session um so that if you have any questions you can type in um i will try to answer that in live uh, anything that you did not understand, I will go, go very slow. Uh, and uh, please uh, feel free to ask questions in between and I will uh, share my responses to that. Uh, sir, shall I sh uh, share the screen? So firstly, um, Poultry Mont. So ours is a poultry monitoring solutions uh, company. So now it started as a monitoring, but now we are um, uh, solving many problems, not just monitoring, but also enhancing the entire value chain using um, technology like technologies like uh, artificial intelligence and IoT. So you will be seeing that in a minute how we are um, changing the entire landscape and uh, transforming the poultry processes. Let me just start with the uh, with our product video here.
Voice is not coming. Can you hear the voice now, sir? Namaskar, Monday. Hill poultry sector is one of the fastest growing agri sectors in India at a rate of 7 to 8% annually. And the demand for poultry meat and eggs is going to increase drastically in the next two to three years. Namaskar, Monday. My name is Srinivas, Srinivas Chandam. And our company name is MLIT Solutions Private Limited, started in 2016 with a focus to improve the uh, process optimization of the poultry industry. Poultry Mon is basically a local as well as the online remote monitoring system with by monitoring uh, critical parameters and helps in the, by monitoring we can prevent the damages as well as uh, improve the efficiency and finally good returns or quick returns on the investment. This smart poultry mon can be implemented anywhere in the poultry domain. MLIT uh, vision is to digitize the entire poultry industry using the latest technologies like IoT, analytics and artificial intelligence, which is to solve the problems currently existing in poultry industry. Industry is now facing many challenges like huge increase in feed cost, labor challenges and inefficiency in process. It is becoming tough for the farmers to increase their yield in these difficult times. Poultry Mon are revolutionary smart poultry solutions increase the productivity, quality and efficiency of hatcheries and farms using advanced technologies at the touch of a button. Getting right information at right time is crucial for hatching cycles and farms in real time. Deviations in temperature, humidity, fan, ammonia, CO2 and power factors etc. have negative impact on hatchability with traditional practices. Poultry Mon gives access to real time monitoring anytime, anywhere over the mobile. Any deviations are immediately notified to the concerned person via mobile and local alert, which helps in taking quick actions immediately to avoid further damage. Poultry Mon is the first and only company to introduce these technologies, which brings the power of artificial intelligence and AOT to poultry farms and hatcheries by continuously monitoring the process to prevent damages and enhance efficiency, thereby helping to get quick returns. I'm Archana Chindam, CEO of Poultry Mon. Our vision and focus is to improve productivity in poultry industry drastically and bring in paradigm shift in the processes using advanced technologies. Our solutions can be implemented across the verticals of poultry from hatcheries, layer farms, cold rooms, EC houses, breeders farms. We provide a centralized monitoring platform where you can access data of your farms and hatcheries at various locations on your mobile or laptop. Poultry Mon gives you real-time analysis and reports for tracking your hatchability and mortality percentages. We have received tremendous encouragement from the poultry industry to implement new technologies to increase productivity and sustainability. We are proud to share that we are serving the largest broiler company, Sugna Foods. So um, that was an introduction about uh, what we are doing in the poultry. So um, as uh, uh, Sir has rightly mentioned, uh, so there's a, a lot of uh, immense technology intervention that is needed in the agri sector to increase farmers' welfare and also the productivity. So in the future, by 2025, uh, so if you are going to uh, serve to uh, people of uh, more than 8 billion, so what could be uh, the uh, measures that we have to take now to cater to that such demand. So poultry by 2025, it's going to be the largest consumed meat across all the meat segments because of its various reasons. 
whether it's cultural, high protein content, and also affordability levels. So now uh, it is the cheapest uh, protein that is available uh, with a lot of protein content uh, for health conscious customer consumers who are uh, largely driven towards protein, in uh, protein intake and also other factors that uh, are going to um, increase the demand for poultry sector. So as Sir has rightly mentioned, uh, the interventions that are uh, needed in terms of technology, process optimization, and also supply chain optimization is critical to gain um, uh, hold and also increase the productivity. So we, there is a challenge that uh, we need to produce more with less. So the uh, land uh, is limited, uh, the labor is limited, how we can increase the productivity. So it can only happen through technology enablement in the current processes and existing processes that can bring this paradigm shift towards uh, growth of the industry and also towards the overall holistic development of the value chain, whether it's agri, whether it's allied sectors, it's, it's imperative that uh, whatever uh, initiatives that our government is taking towards the empowerment of farmers is quite critical in the coming next years. So that has been established. So um, uh, I'll, I'll start uh, how we started uh, into the journey. So before that, uh, let me also share um, my screen. So can you uh, see the screen, sir? So uh, I'll uh, walk you through the journey how uh, we uh, went into the poultry. So earlier that um, uh, we uh, poultry meant uh, it was uh, since I'm from Hyderabad, uh, it's uh, chicken biryani or chicken sixty five, to be honest. But uh, uh, so my husband and uh, my husband and me uh, we started this company. We lived in the U.S. for almost ten years, and then we moved back uh, to look um, at our family business, which is a manufacturing unit. And that's how uh, we got into the industrial IoT in 2016. Uh, 2016 was a very nascent stage for IoT technologies to be in to get to the right manufacturer to pr produce an IoT, the network connectivity. There were a lot of challenges in that segment at that point of time. So we we have a manufacturing unit which where uh, we produce aerospace components and supply to ISRO, VSSC, and uh, even BARC. So uh, our components are in Chandrayaan, uh, Mangalyaan. These are some of these are some of the projects. So uh, what um, uh, these companies wanted us to have a continuous data uh, of remote data, which is automated, uh, so that um, the uh, composition and the process is accurate. Uh, so that's where we started with our, uh, with an app uh, using the IoTs. Uh, so that's where our remote monitoring has started. So we were uh, making inroads into the industrial uh, IoT segment. Uh, so one day uh, we are talking with a friend who had a hatchery. So he was mentioning. Uh, so we mentioned him that we are remotely monitoring the process in inside these um, uh, furnaces where the temperature needs to be monitored at around thousand degrees centigrade to um, confirm the for the heat treatment of these materials uh, to increase their uh, strength and you know tensile all the factors. So he was mentioning, OK, uh, you are doing that. So um, recently, uh, 3,000 chicks have died in one of the hatchery because the operator was sleeping at night. And there was no system in place for uh, me to know or, to, or the manager to know what was happening at that time in the hatcheries. Because usually, these hatcheries and farms are at remote locations. To, for, for a management person to go there and have a track of what is happening is not ha has not been in place at that time. So he was mentioning, okay, this is the technology that it uh, that poultry industry needs since it's livestock. Why don't you look at our farm and understand how uh, it can be transformed or transferred to hatcheries? That's when we uh, got a to closer look of the poultry industry. So where we observe. So even though um, you know uh, the industry from the uh, where it started as a backyard farming in the 1970s now has grown to be the India's fastest growing agri sector, second largest uh, uh, now it's third largest uh, third largest egg producer, 
and uh, sorry, it's second largest egg producer. Now it's third largest meat producer uh, behind US. So first largest is China, uh, both in broiler and uh, eggs. So uh, we have seen that uh, still, even though it is a, a second and third largest in respective areas, but the technology that is being used for the process is still primitive, which was being used from the 1970s. So we have seen a tremendous scope to fill the gaps using the technology factor to increase the productivity. So, um, for example, if, uh, if uh, in, in foreign countries like Netherlands and USA, the productivity and the hatchability factor is about 90 to 93, 95 percent. But here in India, we are still struggling to achieve a productivity of more than 80 percent on an average. So there is a scope of improvement to go till 15 percent more. That will give us a tremendous increase and hold over the markets in India, not only in India, but also on a global level. So this intervention can, um, the technology intervention will drive largely the growth of the industry in the coming years. That is for sure, because now uh, with the lack of resources and also a uh, lack of educated and uh, um, aware resources is a challenge for the industry and also catering to the demand from domestic as well as global is also a challenge for the industry. Uh, we spoke to our customers who are, you know, varied from um, the fifth largest uh, broiler company like Suguna to a middle um, a middle uh, farmer who produces about uh, six lakh eggs. So the only problem is there is a lot of disparity between the data that is given to them and the actual data that is happening at that farm or a hatchery. So that with the sole aim of improving the entire value chain of poultry. So we started um, this uh, uh, developing this product in 2018. So when we look at the ma market as of 2018, it stood at a $14 billion level and uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, expected to grow three times by 2024 at a CAGR of 16.2%. So and and sixty percent of is this growth is expected to be from the Asia, uh, not only India, countries like uh, Thailand um, and Vietnam and these uh, you know, Southeast Asian countries. The demand is rapidly driven by affordability factors and also health conscious consumers. So we will see uh, sixty percent growth from Southeast Asian countries largely and um, also you know on a global level as well so um, this is about the market opportunity just in india so we have about more than uh, odd 3000 hatcheries and 1.2 lakh farmer broiler farmers and 1.1 uh, 1, 1, uh, 1 lakh of layer farmers so largely uh, okay let me um, go to this slide where we can where i can explain how a poultry value chain works so here we have um, uh, the entire cycle starts from the parent farm. So uh, th this segment is largely divided into two verticals. One is broiler segment uh, or the meat segment and one is the layer segment or the table egg se segment that we consume. So uh, there are two types of eggs here. One are the hatchable eggs where we will get chicks from these hatchable eggs and one are, the other one is a table eggs where we consume it, but it is not capable of producing a chick. So these both are different segments. And coming to the consumption of this uh, table eggs also, when we look at uh, countries like uh, China, where they consume more than 220 eggs per capita, and also US, uh, they stand at 180 per capita in egg consumption. But here in India, we consume only uh, 70, 69 to 70 eggs per year per capita. So there is a huge uh, um, increase, uh, potential and also huge uh, undernourishment that is happening in the country. Earlier it was only 40 and 45 uh, per capita, but uh, it is largely driven by, you know, um, in uh, neck uh, uh, awareness, uh, awareness by neck uh, and also government where, you know, they have increased and also introduced egg consumption uh, in public schools 
uh, and all the uh, market campaigns that has been run was responsible to get the get to a level of 70 per capita now so if that consumption moves to 71 that one number will create more than 30000 jobs in the industry so you can only imagine the possibilities of how huge the industry is going to be in the future and also how much scope that is there for any entrepreneurs to get into the food sector not just the tech but also on the farming level on a rural level on integration at a supply chain level trading marketing distribution so this is there is a whole gamut of opportunities that are available in this sector just like any agri uh, sector this poultry is also booming um, so there was a uh, you know um, uh, tremendous loss that happened on the earlier um, covid uh, just before covid from um, january till uh, march and april the industry has suffered tremendous loss because of the wrong social campaigning campaigning that um, if you eat chicken then there is a possibility of uh, getting uh, covid but um, thanks to the government and you know industry players who actively campaign for uh, you know chicken not only um, improve your improves your immunity actually it's good to eat during you know to avoid and boost our immunity and uh, strength to combat uh, any infection that uh, you may uh, get so coming back to the uh, verticals here so the parent farm this is where the journey of a uh, chick starts here the parent farm the egg which is laid at the parent farm then goes to a cold room where it is stored uh, you know just to um, before the product uh, before the processing that happens in the hatchery so uh, the journey uh, it, it goes to a cold room where um, since it's livestock example they are like um, uh, babies or you know any other egg that needs to be monitored continuously through the entire value chain so that is the constant in the uh, this industry since it's livestock the eggs are also need to be maintained below 17 degrees to avoid any kind of um, you know uh, uh, fertility or growth that may happen so the growth should happen only inside these uh, hatcheries otherwise uh, it will die in the cold room itself so once they get into the hatchery for placement they are placed inside the incubators for 21 days so what is what do these incubators or uh, hatcheries do so incubator is nothing like a fridge uh, for example it's like a more or less of a refrigerator kind where the eggs are placed inside these machines for 21 days and needs to be maintained at uh, you know optimum uh, temperature and humidity uh, and also other fact uh, factors like uh, chillers and um, the door opening conditions and also there is a rack turner all these are needs to be maintained accurately so by the end of 21 days you will receive healthy chicks so we started with a hatchery because it is considered to be the heart of the industry for example if the conditions are not maintained properly in the hatchery it will have a larger impact on the overall ecosystem let me explain why if the if those conditions are not maintained properly in the hatchery once it gets to the farm they will die quickly they'll have uh, imp uh, impairments like uh, walking in impairments or growth impairments and they cannot get uh, they cannot obtain the uh, maximum level of growth so it will it is the most susceptible to get infected for any viruses or it will die early in the farm itself so this hatchery maintenance is critical for the poultry value chain so that's how that's why we started so basically this hatchery is, is mimicking the nature's environment of a bird's womb so where you know where the birds naturally in the backyard farming the bird use once it lays eggs it used to sit on the eggs for 21 days uh, and then by the end of that the chicks will come but on a larger scale if you are doing this production it needs to be mechanized so that is where the hatchery's uh, role comes into picture so once the chicks are hatched 
they are transported to the whether it's an integrated leased farm lease or contracted farm or if they have their own if a customer has uh, his own farm he can get to the, the these birds day one birds are sent to these farms for further growth so based on the breed if it is a layer breed they will go to the layer farm vice versa if it is a broiler it goes to the broiler farm so in broiler farm uh, after for, uh, 39 to 40 days it will achieve a weight of 1.5 kg from there it will it is taken to the retail market for meat but at the layer farm the layer egg starts to lay eggs after 21 weeks so this life cycle of a layer bird is about 100 weeks where it will lay egg every day after 21 weeks so that's how the uh, verticals are so uh, this coming to the flock management it is a critical area where the production data is stored uh, whether it is a hatchery or a farm this production data is st uh, stored on a day-to-day -day basis again coming to the present existing and existing uh, practice is this data is stored uh, manually and also uh, uh, inaccurately and uh, irregular at irregular intervals hence the data that is being gen uh, th that is being captured is inaccurate and when there is an accountability or traceability factor it it does not give us the accurate analysis of whether uh, what has happened if the production has gone down what are the parameters that affected this um, production loss so we need to have an accurate and automated data that is critical and vital for the um, industry to move on and also to customer to identify the gaps and work towards it. So coming to the processing unit, as Earl has light, rightly mentioned, uh, India is still predominantly a wet market where we consume the uh, meat fresh. We go to a chicken store and get the meat. But um, the processing the capacity of India is still at a 4% where the frozen food uh, segment and other segment, readily um, cooking uh, segment is only 4%. So, but in the foreign countries, it is more than 60 to 70% where we do not see a, a live retail market as well. So, there is an opportunity uh, to get into the processing unit as well where they automate the uh, process uh, uh, and dividing the bird into uh, breast and breast meat or uh, legs or wings you know that, that is uh, being done entirely automatically in other countries so feed plant why uh, feed plant is a crucial element into the uh, ecosystem is free feed consists of 65 to 70 percent of the production cost so whether it is uh, maize or soy or other proteins that are uh, included in this uh, feed plan to achieve the uh, you know objective growth rate feed is a vital parameter it largely affects the growth intake of the bird so another uh, another uh, compound here is if the temperatures or the farm conditions are not being maintained properly there is a dip or increase in the feed consumption it is a, a variable that affects a large uh, largely on the consumer cost front for example in winters if the if there is no proper heat heating system or even uh, there is a heating system but they are not maintaining it properly then the birds will eat more feed so it it will uh, the re, the reaction would be there will there will be a irrelevant irrelevant and um, abnormal growth rate in terms of its uh, uh, age in, and in terms of its weight. So there has to be a balance that is um, uh, correlated between uh, the uh, conditions and also its weight rate. So it's imperative and it's critical to maintain these farms environmentally accurately. So that is a large factor as well here in uh, feed. Precision livestock farming. So I'll just uh, give a brief here. Then we have a slide which explain uh, explains this as a uh, in in detail. So precision livestock farming is as uh, as uh, uh, the Agri Tech Precision Ag. So there is a large factor of uh, PLF uh, as well in poultry, where we can rightly identify diseases. 
predict the diseases and also predict the outcomes of growth and its um, animal welfare using real time technologies like ai and um, uh, object analysis image analysis so this is a whole different uh, element that we have here in livestock so once this chicken goes into the retail segment so what is happening to the consumer behavior um, uh, in uh, in uh, these present conditions is consumer want to is more aware of what is eating what he is eating and where it is coming from that's why the entire farm to fork um, technologies have come into the picture where the consumer accurately wants to know if it's organic if it is cage free or uh, if it is um, subjected to any cruelty or any other factor that he might want to um, have a uh, you know he, he wants to be more conscious about uh, uh, the entire details so what technologies like ours will do is if he's going to a supermarket aisle and he's scanning the product uh, on his mobile phone he will get the entire chain of details from the time the egg is laid till the time it is reached to the supermarket who is the farmer and how these technologies have impacted the income of the farmer and also how uh, antibiotic free or you know um, organic fed all these he wants to understand and know so technologies like ai and big data and blockchain they have a huge role to play in this entire value chain to understand the behavior of the customer and also on the other head, other end in, uh, strengthen the farmer for future challenges in terms of traceability and also in terms of trackability and uh, to uh, enhance the production and also re reduce any fraud so this is how uh, the value chain of poultry works let me know if you have any questions so uh, major challenges as i was mentioning uh, uh, in the previous slide what are the major challenges that the industry is facing right now that prompted us to get into to have a deeper look into this market and um, impact uh, through our technology so coming to the major challenges the industry is facing right now so there is a mortality of 10 to 12% of chicks die in the farms within the 7 days of placing due to in improper maintenance resulting in the losses of nearly half a billion dollars per year so this is a major factor so um, a day old chick is more or like a babies they need to be maintained at warm temperatures in the in the on and also closed and contained um, uh, circles so uh, for the first 7 days that is where the major mortality happens more than 10 to 12% why it happens is usually uh, because 90% uh, of indian farms are open sheds and the placement happens during the winter months so you can only imagine winters are again cold uh, even uh, they uh, because of global warming uh, the winters have uh, now we see uh, temperatures going down uh, to uh, for 5 to 6 degrees or you know even 9 degrees in south so um and uh, this is uh, the production is largely concentrated in the southern uh, india due to its humidity and weather conditions so now uh, if these uh, day old chicks are subjected to um, cold conditions so they cannot tolerate that kind of uh, cold so immediately they die so th hence the mortality is high during the first 7 days what can be done so what can be done is the farms need to be maintained so they what they do currently is they have uh, heaters in different places but they do not know if the entire shed has uh, same temperature or whether it is uh, spread across on a different temperatures at different areas so that needs to be optimized so we are bringing in that technology where we tell them that farm uh, shed 1 has this temperature or shed 2 has a deviation so that the operator will go to the shed number 2 and um increase the heat or decrease the heat heat based on the alert monitoring so i was mentioning about the hatcheries okay let me go to the uh, 
this this slide will explain um, clearly of how the hatching process done this is a typical hatchery currently there is no uh, digital display or digital um, uh, uh, device where it can uh, uh, display what is happening inside the incubators so how much is what is the temperature what is the humidity that is going on inside these uh, incubators for 20 24 by 7 for 21 days so this is where the eggs are placed into these incubators so each incubator can hold a capacity of 30000 eggs so you can imagine you can only imagine the scale so a typical average customers have about uh, uh, 40 machines and uh, his um, uh, uh, per cycle production is about 6 lakhs so uh, currently what happens is the um, uh, operator comes to each and has to come to each and every incubator and check the details there is a thermometer placed near this window and he, he has to check in the thermometer and write the report usually what happens is that thermometer reading is uh, very negligible and he has to write every one hour and also check each and every machine every half an hour but that does not happen uh, in real in reality the operator comes and jots down all his um, you know shift uh, every one hour at, at a time and then he goes and sits in a corner so at the end of 21 days if a manager is asking what why is there a production loss the operator will say no i have seen uh, i i was checking it every one hour you can see the details but is the data accurate no so uh, uh, to so we are the first company to introduce these technologies to improve the visibility inside the incubator connect it wirelessly and give the management accurate real time information along with alerts in case if something is going wrong so there are 10 parameters that affects uh, the process inside these incubators so uh, there is temperature wet temperature humidity fan and what at what rpm the fan is running the door is open or closed then rack turning rack count airflow air quality power ammonia and carbon dioxide so ammonia and carbon dioxide are at the farm level which is a major concern for the uh, farmer so here we are capturing the data from hatcheries through our uh, patented technology so we have uh, designed uh, a device especially so this is a device we have designed and it's patented we have received the final um, uh, report on that patent also where it accurately displays the temperature and other values here uh, and inform them over the mobile mobile or web application so we give them a mobile app in case there is an increase in temperature or humidity or any of these factors is immediately alerted locally there is a local alarm and also over the mobile application so that the operator can go to that particular machine so if the, the, if, uh, the deviation is uh, in the number 10 there suppose there is a deviation happening in the number 10 he can directly go to the number 10 machine and take care of what is happening why um, if, if uh, the temperature is low he will increase the heaters or vice versa so um, in the similarly we capture uh, parameters like ammonia power and air quality from from farms which are open and also closed so the entire process is driven by iot and cloud big data and artificial intelligence so uh, the artificial intelligence factors comes where we have um, algorithms embedded into the entire system and process where to you know highlight what is the uh, notification that needs to be given based on the priority whom to send based on the priority so there is a lot of uh, ai and ml factor that is going on so why this is few um, so we collect the patterns and say because you have maintained um, at uh, 99.5 or 99.8 your production uh, your productivity is about 80 81 percent for example let's say 
and so we we collect uh, patterns like such that and we give uh, the management insights you maintain the temperatures around 99.8 or 99.9 then you will have a productivity of 85% or 80% again based on the breed of the parent so there are a lot of factors about the hatchability and productivity so we can accurately predict so if you are maintaining at 100 degrees there will be there will be a loss of 2% or 3% so that analysis that we are giving to the customer is based on the machine learning and which is also accurate based on the previous patterns that has happened so not just the temperature and humidity so since we we are collecting 10 parameters and 60 50 machines into every 5 minutes so you can uh, uh, you you can only imagine uh, the data that we get in 21 days so all this is processed using big data for uh, analysis and predictions so so that is a mortality and hatchability factor coming to the technology so um uh, for uh, in india there is only one vet veterinarian poultry veterinarian uh, available for 800 farms so it is impossible for a vet to go to each and every farm and identify sick birds and also tell the farmer that he needs to use so and so nutrients uh, for growth or uh, medication in ca- in case of um, uh, any any infections or in general so um, ideally uh, there has to be a veterinarian visit every um, uh, two weeks but that is uh, highly impossible given the lack of uh, vets in the industry so our technology with our technology the data is the data and pictures are sent to these vets and the, there is a separate section for the vets also where um, he can actually observe and maintain uh, the farms under him so he will also get day to day information mortality percentage productivity percentage feed intake its distribution all that can be solved through technology so he need not visit each and every farm to understand uh, what is happening but currently that's a challenge because there is no uh, vet available in place so significantly that is costing the farmer in terms of loss why it is a loss for example if the vet is not coming uh, for two two weeks and something is happening in uh, on the eighth day or ninth day uh, farmer does not have the awareness of that is a symptom for so and so disease or why this batch is not performing well or why the the, the birds are not taking the feed so his lack of awareness will result in a loss that can be avoided using our technology and coming to the stress so i want to stress i want to mention largely this factor because of the major attributes that is the, that are happening globally and also is lot of awareness that is going on Uh, from the consumer end as well so we want to consume antibiotic free uh, cage free uh, meat and um, other which is which is not being uh, subjected to lot of stress in the environment so since this is also livestock uh, so imagine uh, we are in summer and then we don't have a proper ventilation or any fan or in that place and the temperature is about more than 42 degrees we'll also undergo a lot of stress in terms of sweat um, uh, dehydration and others so uh, similarly these open farms and these birds which are inside these open farms when the temperature goes to more than 35 degrees there is a lot of almost 30 to 40% of stress happens because of the stress they lose weight rapidly they'll stop eating so and also drinking so uh, eventually they um, what happens in during summers each shed has about more than 20 to 25 birds that will die just because of the heat uh, when uh, so uh, considering telangana and ap now sem- summer the temperature is going to more than 40 to 43 degrees so you can ima- only imagine how much stress that birds goes so the farmer has 
uh from uh, so they also practice some like uh, they they have sprayers they have hay to protect these birds uh, eventually the birds are the his uh, livelihood so he 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 largely main tries to maintain the farm optimally but for a manager sitting inside his house and the operator who is taking the the farm supervisor who is at the field there is a lot of uh, miscommunication and misinformation that is happening so if that shed is going about 38 degrees the sprayers should be turned on manually and then uh, the hay needs to be uh, in place there are um, uh, sheds which are mo- uh, uh, you know sprayed with water the cotton curtains kind of thing so that that needs to be watered so that there is a cool air uh, passing into these um, uh, sheds so um for, for him to do that he has to know what are the tem- what are the environmental conditions currently in those sheds he will sit at one in his room but he has to also know that uh, there is a increase in uh, temperature in the shed number 5 so immediately he has to go there currently that's not happening he will um, start the sprinklers at any, uh, in the mornings and then in the evening so that's it but uh, what happens uh, during the day time where the temperature is a maximum so all that so this unwanted stress has a lot of effect on animal welfare so there are so many companies that are uh, mentioning this animal welfare and now uh, in foreign countries they have largely so uh, the many big companies in uh, um, us like tyson and others they have uh, clearly mentioned by 2022 all the laying eggs all the table table eggs uh, from them for them will be cage free that means they'll not be in the cages but for in uh, in india to happen that it will take a lot of time but here they have increased the sizes of cages and uh, others uh, they are also largely driven towards animal welfare now so as a farmer or a aware consumer uh, this stress is also um, we are eliminating or at least enabling the farmer to maintain at optimal condi- uh, conditions to in- decrease the stress on the birds so largely contributing to the animal welfare factor i've covered this so this is this is a dashboard where we inform the customer uh, the after 21 days the entire analysis can be present uh, can uh, be uh, we are giving the um, uh, customer where we can have where he can have the accurate analysis of uh okay what was a machine that has been you know uh, maintained properly whose shift was uh, maintained properly so whether uh, this third shift was uh, they were they doing the better job so this entire analysis and real time information is increasing the overall operational control eventually uh, resulting in better productivity not just the uh, profit of uh, the farmer but also the quality of meat that is also a large factor so if uh, it's like baking uh, any other process right so um, the if, for example if you take baking the ingredients and also the baking temperature everything needs to be in place to get a, a good cake similarly here if uh, um, the entire process needs to be monitored in a proper way to also increase the uh quality of the meat so eventually we also want to have uh, um consume meat which is um, which has lot of protein and less fat all these factors they will um uh, so this entire real time monitoring contributes largely largely to the factor of better quality and also sustainability how sustainability okay let, um we come to the sustainable factor here uh, so this um, uh, operator can be um uh given another job of saving the energy and resources for example if the hatchery is running more than 100 degree temperature instead of 99 degree that 1 degree waste uh, the energy consumption is a, is is not required where we can save on the energy on uh, energy also not just the cost wise but also on the environmental wise so uh, resources can be used for another purpose and also energy is uh, energy consumption is reduced so operational control and predictive maintenance so we can actually uh, um, predict 
if uh, the fan is going to be broken or the um, temperature that incubator needs to uh, needs maintenance all these factors come after uh, they, the, the once we have the data this is just in a prediction predictive model where we can tell the supervisor that uh, there will be a fan problem in the future because that that is running more than 300 rpm level or so so we have showcased uh, we have done multiple st case studies at different uh, customer location to showcase the improvement of more than 2 to 3 percent in hatcheries and reduction in mortalities of 3 to 4 percent in farms so this is still largely due to the intervention that is happening the supervisor when we give him the alert is taking care of that problem immediately so that yield improvement is 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 the result of the immediate interventions and um, uh, the uh, the issues that are uh, generated are solved immediately. So that's a large factor. So precision livestock farming, as I was mentioning before, so this has the capacity to transform entirely how the industry is practicing the poultry process now. So here. Uh, we capture the uh, PLF is a technology aims at continuous automatic monitoring of animal production, including real time monitoring of growth, health and wel welfare. The purpose of PLF is to support farmers in making daily management decisions by providing extra senses using IoT, AI, cameras, all these senses and to make farmers less dependent on human labor what we are doing here so we are capturing all the information of bird how the bird is behaving inside the farm whether it is walking freely all all through the farm or whether it is confined to only one particular area then that means that area is um, warm and the other area is colder for for it or whether uh, it is uh, whether the distribution of these birds inside the farm or uh, is it um, normal or it is flocking to different areas whether the distribution along the feed line or water line is normal whether uh, a bird is particularly showing uh, sickness uh, or is it um, continuously making different sounds here we capture environmental parameters and then how much feed it is taking, water consumption and its daily weight, sound, any distress sound or any sound that is associated to a particular disease symptom and also based on its body position. Uh, whether it is standing and flapping wings or whether it is sitting for a long time or just uh, 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 it just fell on its side and it's not getting up all this we capture using cameras and uh, we have temperature and environmental sensors and then uh, real-time cameras which capture the images and also sound capturing systems audio capturing where this entire data is analyzed in patterns uh, and also correlate to the disease symptoms and environmental condition symptoms so that means if, the, if a bird is displaying some kind of symptom, we'll alert that farmer that this bird, um, you have to take care of uh, this bird, whether uh, vaccinate or give uh, nutrients or take it out of the farm before it can infect other birds. Everything in real time. So uh, the huge amount of this data will be immediately processed within seconds using big data and AI. And then we will give we will predict when these birds are going to become 1.5 kg. So 1.5 kg is a norm where uh, this uh, uh, by the time 1.5, they will uh, transfer these birds to the retail. They, they will give this for distribution to get into the retail market. So that accurate uh, predictions will decrease the demand and supply barrier that is existing currently. When we look at the during the COVID time, the farmer was throwing the birds um, or burning the birds because there was no one to take care of it. But when we look at the retail market, 
he was ready to give it to for, for free but in the retail market we were buying at 200 250 why this disparity largely because of the uh, there is a uh, um, uh, indirect uh, there is a direct connection between supply and demand and also there is no uh, correlative data as to uh, you know you need, we need to supply this million of birds in in um, march or april so that kind of disparity can be completely minimized to have a proper Uh, demand and supply chain and also uh, when the bird needs when the bird needs to be vaccinated when they needs to be given the nutrients what is their daily feed intake so uh, the here an in interesting point would be if the bird uh, uh, if all of the, all these uh, subjective conditions are maintained properly the bird the feed intake the bird is taking will also be optimized Uh, for example if the, uh, the term is called uh, food conversion conversion ratio feed conversion ratio so uh, currently the feed conversion ratio is about 1.4 to 1.5 kg so if um, uh, sorry 1.3 to 1.54 kg that means if one bird is eating 1.4 kg of feed it will become 1.5 kg in weight in 40 days that's the calculation that happens and a farmer's uh, profit largely depends on fcr so this optimum optimal process will reduce the fcr by 1 to 2% so 1% increase in fcr will directly get to 20% of his profit so it's a direct connection between the profit of the farmer and the feed these technologies will help achieve uh, the farmers increase by more than 40 to 50% currently we are uh, using our hatchery tech and farm technologies we are able to uh, increase 30% of farmers income we want to uh, so we are in the r&d phase for this we want we are going to develop this where we can have a complete uh, more than 50 to 60% of farmers improvement and also the environmental and animal welfare uh, factors so these are some of the images that uh, we are working on where our um, uh, platform is identifying whether it is a bird not bird how the beak uh, is or uh, how the eye is so this is how the plf is uh, is going to look like but this is for uh, two and three two or three uh, birds uh, but uh, usually a shed has more than 20000 to 50000 birds so it will be a pattern of details and everything and uh, but we give uh, the farmer um, very uh, user friendly information and this is another aspect that we are working on so these are uh, um, hatchable eggs they are brown in color um, so Uh, this is where the chicks come from uh, usually what happens is uh, when they are uh, collecting these eggs and uh, placing them uh, sending them to cold room and hatchery uh, a person will take about 15 minutes uh, to set uh, this tray of eggs so what he does is he will uh, grade these eggs based on size shape texture and uh, uh, he has to see the, if there are any cracks if there are any cracks the egg will not hatch in the hatchery so but what happens is human negligence to the naked eye and everything there is a 2 to 3% of loss that happens in the uh, first week of incubation which can be eliminated using technology so we have an um, so we are developing an app where we scan this uh, tray and it will accurately tell us uh, this is a grade a egg or this this has um, uh, fine cracks hairline cracks or this is a wrong texture this is too big to hatch all that information is given within 10 to 15 seconds we'll get an accurate analysis if this egg is 90% hatched or egg has this has a fertility all that information coming to um, our uh, uh, team um, i am the coo and uh, mr shrinivas is the coo who is also my husband 
so he worked largely um uh with the ANZ Bank, Sodexo, Xerox, Texas Instruments in the US. Uh, so he has more than 20 plus years uh, in technology and business intelligence. And I come from a management background, as Sir has introduced. So we work largely, uh, closely, very closely with industry mentors uh, for domain knowledge and expertise, and also um, uh, on a business side mentors, technology mentors. So uh, he is our investor. He's also uh, e Chopal was his brainchild. He's an ITC head for Agri and IT division. So this is some of our team. Coming to our key customers, uh, uh, Suguna, which is the fifth largest broiler company in the world, is a customer and also India's uh, India's uh, largest broiler company, Godrej Agrovet, Avigen, uh, which is a multinational, Sakko Group. They are the they are India's largest egg producers they produce more than one crore eggs per day table eggs per day so they um, they were producing 80000 um, last year but uh, now they are producing more than one crore uh, so they they also want to rapidly in increase their uh, production uh, due to large demand lotus farms janaki we are present in five states currently we have impacted more than 1.8 crore chicks till date and more than 600, 650 IoT machines in place, smart devices, and um, uh, uh, impacted more than 1.8 crore. So we process 2.8 million data points per month. So that's uh, how, how much... Uh, data that is being generated but in the coming future one poultry farm can alone alone has a uh, capacity to produce more than four million data points just one farm um, in, in across all the verticals environmental feed growth fcr uh, welfare all these so one shed alone has a capacity to produce more than 4 million data points. So the uh, expanse itself is so huge. Then we should be ready with uh, futuristic technologies like blockchain, big data, AI, machine learning, IOTs. So we are only, uh, we are currently placing the uh, ground level work where we have IOTs of different sensors at place to get in get onto a larger canvas where we have varied data that is coming from all these areas like uh, parent farm cold room and then uh, um, uh, this hatchery farm uh, processing unit and then we have flock management data we have plf data so this entire uh, data can be correlated uh, to identify the gaps the uh, currently the every all the data is in uh, silos they are not integrated so we are integrating the data at different verticals to give a customer accurate picture of what is happening at his various levels of business where the chick is going presently whether it is stopped the fleet management part these chicks needs to be sent in cold uh, the uh, EC vehicles, uh, where it is it currently, how is it placed in the cold room, how is it placed in the farm, how the farmer is maintaining the farm. So not just a corporate company, but to a farmer, to a marginal farmer, he can be at his home, whether uh, he, uh, if his farm uh, is in outskirts, he can accurately see what is happening on just his mobile phone. So now, now everybody is using uh, YouTube and WhatsApp in rural areas. Again, coming to the network also, uh, with the advent of 5G uh, currently. So, um, so 5G, uh, so right now we, uh, uh, in the world, um, we are the cheapest data, this uh, Wi-Fi and uh, this network data. Uh, India is the cheapest country. So we, and, and far reached, in terms of uh, rural reach and other uh, sectors so and uh, considering we have more than 1 billion people 
the network also played a huge role in our uh, growth largely when we look at these farms they are always in the rural areas away from the uh, villages because um, of the uh, flies that comes uh, in these farms and the smell or the sound so usually these are at the remote locations uh, even now when we go to the farms we see a good connectivity at these rem remote locations as well that was one of the reason for our faster scale where um, the connectivity is also proper to in order to connect these sheds onto our platform we need good connectivity without any interruptions uh, being uh, they are in rural areas so um, with the advent of uh, 5g nb iot and zigbees then um, the connectivity factor and also um, uh will be easier for us the infrastructure or uh, how we can connect these farms will be uh, easier uh, for us um, in our way forward so this is uh, some of the awards uh, that we have received this was during the poultry india expo uh, international expo where um, uh, his uh, godrej uh, agrovet chairman uh, so where he was mentioning that the farmers and the poultry companies need to use uh, our companies like us technology companies like us to enhance their growth and also have meaningful information in place so we recently we have been awarded by fiki as emerging technologies for digital applications in agriculture and these are some of the awards that uh, uh, we have received and uh, and this is some of uh, our stories in the media so we as i mentioned we are the first uh, uh, and uh, only company as of now uh, in the hatchery remote uh, smart segment and that is our story um, sir um, any questions uh, please i would uh, like to uh, take questions from you guys so uh, as as uh, to summarize the entire uh, um, session today uh, the technology interventions like ai and iot these smart technologies have a huge potentials has a huge potential to increase the productivity and also increase the income of the farmer enabling the farmer for uh, future challenges um, in terms of uh, uh, increase in demand and also demand and supply increase and also identify gaps in his production so this entire um, value chain can be optimized and improved so um, um, so we are hoping to transform and also expand to more cities uh, and states here in india not only in india but also uh, to southeast uh, asian countries and countries like our neighboring countries like nepal and bangladesh where the poultry is also in huge demand uh, so any um, uh, aspiring entrepreneurs who wants to come into uh, not just poultry tech or uh, also supply chain or uh, marketing distribution um, they have a huge opportunity um, in terms of uh, growth in their business as well sir hope uh, that was uh, useful and uh, clear in terms of clarity and uh, ho hope i didn't go too fast professor moni you are on mute sir professor moni unmute yourself you are on mute uh, mr manish is there any query posted no sir no sir okay well so thank you very much madam archana chinnam for your very innovative and insightful and wonderful address on poultry tech and as a person who initiated the talk on animal production health informatics network way back in 2000 in a veterinary council of india you know seminar and 2018 banaras in the university 
where I've listed the type of informatics network is essential in livestock sector, which included poultry informatics network value chain. And then after 21 years today, I was able to listen to an address by an entrepreneur, a startup, who has whose family was working for a space segment, which has gone into Chandrayaan. Mm -hmm. Now they have come down and working for the poultry farm with a technology which is comprising of big data analytics, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and uh, industrial IoT, and uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, cloud computing, to work for farmers to increase catchability and uh, bring in for uh, farm in uh, income rise. It is very important, and you are working on them. Um, you know, grassroots level segment where you know agriculture and rural development is more important it is a real atmanirbhar bharat for agriculture technology and even though it is a proprietary technology patented technology but it's a technology made in india yes and it yes. has a global global uh, applications here in the world and i'm very happy that uh, as a person who was involved in introducing informatics concept in agriculture sector way back in 87 and uh, with the district information system in 512 districts wherein i introduced out of 26 uh, database project three on one on agriculture animal husbandry and fisheries and 95 15 informatics network i to blueprint for agricultural sector and then national animal disease reporting system connecting 7032 locations in the country for monitoring 144 OIE you know notified diseases and today you know in 2020 you know uh, 2021 i'm able to listen to and host a lecture you know by an young entrepreneur and uh, working on complete poultry informatics network value chain which can be scaled it has got an economic viability it has got a scalability uh, at the you know uh, grassroots level for our poultry you know uh, management and i'm very happy that the data which you are saying that one poultry farm can generate four million data points this is where the agri tech startup of 2.25 lakh agri tech startup in poultry sector alone can come up thank you very much for you know uh, addressing our audience in the national webinar series and doubling forward income by 2022 and i welcome our honorable chancellor shri kanwar shekhar vijendra who is also now joined and uh, i would like to introduce um, him to the audience and uh, shri kanwar shekhar vijendra is the co-founder and Chancellor of Sobit Institute of Engineering and Technology, Meerut, a NAC accredited deemed to be university, and Sobit University, Ganga, Uttar Pradesh. He's a prominent social entrepreneur based in New Delhi and carries leadership role in many organizations. He has been nominated as the co chairman of National Council on Education of ASOCHAM, the oldest Apex Chamber of Commerce in India for the year 2020 21 and 21 22. Shri Kanwar Shendra Vijendra is a persistent advocate of initiatives for education for all, secular values, crisis management through diplomatic and peaceful ways, and globalized system of learning and harmonious coexistence. He has been instrumental in the development of a number of higher educational institutions in North India, including two universities, many research centers, an Ayurved Medical College, College of Naturopathy and Yogic Sciences, and a 100 bed IOS hospital. Shri Kanwar Shekhar Vijendra is instrumental in establishing four centers of excellence Center for Agricultural Informatics and e governance research studies, Center for Agribusiness and Disaster Management studies, Center for Industry De uh, Informatics Development Solutions and Applications, and Center for Industry 4.0 Technology Studies and Applications in the university to promote informatics and technology led development in rural India. He is also planning to establish a center for health informatics and computing in the university. He is very actively involved with a number of social organizations. Acknowledging his contribution in the areas of education and other concerns, he has been copiously honored and awarded. 
He has traveled widely in India and abroad to the countries like USA, UK, Germany, Australia, Russia, China, South Korea, Vietnam, Mongolia, Mauritius, Rwanda, Uganda, and Croatia, etc., to participate in various professional, social, and educational activities. Sri so Kanwar Shekhar Vijendra is a passionate Kandian, avid reader, keen learner, social speaker, occasional poet, and a dreamer. Honorable Chancellor, we uh, welcome to this national webinar series in Dublin Farmers Income in 2022. As the chief patron, we will, rec uh, we will we request you to give your valedictory address. Over thank to you. you very much, Professor. Hey. And uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Archana. Uh, it was a wonderful uh, deliberation today on a very interesting topic. Uh, I'm not in my office today. And uh, I was trying to ask for an excuse from Professor Moni. But when I saw the topic of uh, the day, I thought I should not miss it. Because at a grassroots level, I have seen this problem, what you were discussing and deliberating. So many poultry farms are there at a small scale. In every village, you will find them. From uh, the backyard to the industry, when it went, it took a long time maybe a few decades but intervention of technology in poultry farms it is a new journey especially in india and i'm really happy that you as a couple of techno a technocrat couple decided to work in much needed area where you are really working to strengthen empower and make india self-reliant this particular series, when we look at, this is a national webinar series on doubling farmers' income by 2022. It is an aspiration of Honorable Prime Minister, inspiration of everybody, but very few people have decided to work in this area. This is 24th webinar of this series. From last 24 weeks, every week on Thursday, Professor Moni is having a guest who speaks about technologies, their dreams, their work, and the possibility they give to the society at large. Yes, the aspiration of Honorable Prime Minister is possible if we work in that direction. My compliments and thanks to Professor Moni also for a persistent effort to make it possible. The centers of Shobit University, Center for Agriculture, Informatics, and E-Governance Research Studies, and Center for Agribusiness and Disaster Management Studies. We are doing a wonderful job during this COVID time. Because earlier, when we were working, we were doing a lot of things. The audience was limited. And when the papers were published, report were published, they were also going to a limited audience. But I'm sure that today's webinar and uh, rest all 23 webinars, they had a very large audience. And audience is mixed. It has students, it has practitioners, it has farmers, it has scientists, technocrats, bureaucrats, policymakers, politicians, everybody is there. Tech, and a lot of tech, uh, tech companies, now they are taking interest in that. When I was listening to you and that incubation journey of 21 days in an incubator and the mortality rate due to lack of technology or unawareness and the possibility and the possibility of the business, how much business India can do if we adopt right technology and the price of your technology in comparison to the price of European countries, it gives a win-win situation to everybody. At present, you are working in southern part of the country. But I am sure this webinar will help you also to propagate, to talk about your product, not only in India, but globally. So much has to be done. Thank you very much again. 
that yes, you people are doing it. Because many times we feel that, oh, poetry, what, are they, what is there? What technology can be there? When we talk about uh, data analytics, we talk about AI, we talk about IIoT, a lot of things are there to be done. And I'm sure that students at Shobit University also, those who are uh, listening to you today, they will take up something out of your webinar in the form of a project, or maybe they will get inspired to innovate further, to strengthen the technology further. Thank you again for joining us. It is very important topic indeed. Thank you, Professor Mooney. After 21 years, you met somebody who was talking about a technology in poultry farms and poultry agriculture. But to be honest, in my 50 plus years, first time I have heard somebody talking so passionately about making all these things possible in India and changing the complete ecosystem of poultry industry. Thank you, both of you. Please continue your good work. I will appreciate if Shobit University Center can develop a micro certificate in your technology. I know it is a patented technology, but I always believe Gyan jab hum baatte hain to wo badhta hai. Aur wo hi Lakshmi ke saath bhi hai. Jitna usse baatte hain, wo badh jati hai. So I wish that if we can develop a micro certificate program, maybe a, initially an awareness certificate program for the students. It may be an online program of few hours, few days, a week or two, so that people can be aware of what you are doing. People can get motivated because it is also a responsibility of every innovator, every technocrat, that what I learned, I should pass it on to the younger generation so that they take this journey further. So I wish you a very bright future and hope to meet you people soon in a physical form also, not virtually only. And please stay safe and continue with the good work. Thank you very much. Namaste. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for the kind and encouraging words. So we need uh, encouragement from all the uh, verticals in um, uh, you know, all the places, whether it's academy, academia, uh, poultry companies, or business uh, experts, to continue what we are doing uh, and also grow with. As you have rightly mentioned, sir, it's it's uh, always uh, you know good to have a holistic growth with other people uh, making a larger impact. So, for example, if we might capture around 10% or 15% in our lifetime, but if there is a larger ecosystem place in the market, then the uh, whole of the poultry will, industry will also benefit from these technologies. Uh, thank you very much, sir. And uh, sir, Professor Moni, sir, when he mentioned that this is an ongoing series of 24 sessions, I was really, really impressed because um, a webinar uh, has everybody has doing a webinar, but this is a more uh, focused approach towards uh, doubling farmers' income uh, through Atmanirbhar Bharat and rightly contributing towards uh, uh, how we can uh, uh, increase and gain visibility to different technologies, different sessions, uh, different panelists. It's a really commendable uh, effort which is ongoing. Uh, through 24 weeks so that's not an easy task sir uh, and whenever first uh, when sir has uh, approached me i immediately said okay because it's a it's, it's all a passionate journey that we take on uh, whether through sessions or whether through our technology whether you are encouraging uh, us to come onto your platform to explain uh, about what we are doing our journey so it's it, it all takes a lot of passion to uh, do this kind of um, uh, work and uh, um, so I really appreciate and I'm really thankful that I'm here today um, where I am uh, I got this platform where I can I could share our technology to hundreds of people uh, in, in just one hour so, uh, thank you so much uh, Jendra sir and Moni sir for giving this opportunity today
Thank you very much for joining with us, and we would like to have both you and your your CEO to for a meeting in Delhi in the office of the Honorable Chancellor, Soviet Institute of Engineering and Technology. So thank you very much. With this, we close this seminar and uh, we link the studio for any research inquiries. Please, you know, send the email to the, the uh, uh, Moni at uh, SovietUniversity.ac.in. We thank your participation and greetings from Soviet University. For more research inquiries, please contact Professor Moni Maraswamy, Professor Emeritus and Chairman, Center for Agricultural Informatics and E-Govern and Research Studies and Center for Agribusiness and Disaster Management Studies and former Director General, National Informatics Center, Government of India, New Delhi. Thank you very much. We'll leave the webinar and leave studio.